Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be going over the history of the RDAI as a faction in RTR Imperium Serectum. This is taken from a longer interview that I did with Jottle that you can find in the description down below. Make sure you like and subscribe guys and I'll see you on the video. So on to okay. the RDAI who were pretty influential as we've already discussed uh, quite a bit about Queen Tutor and um, the people that came from the RDAI. So, um, how influential were these guys? Um, very influential. Um, Strabo calls them one of the most powerful Illyrians of the past, um, along with the Autariatai, uh, the Dadani, and, and yeah, so the RDI are later on quite strong. Um, we expanded their starting position quite a bit. Um, if I had to thank a historian um, whose book I discovered um, quite deep into the research, um, I think she's called uh, Marietta uh, Chachel Kors. And um, she wrote a lot about um, the historian Appian um, and his book on Illyria, one of our few sources who really focus on Illyria, even though it's quite short. And um, she really goes into detail um, about mainly like the northern area with the, the whole lot of minor tribes that are there. And the Adi are, um, as I said, one of the major people um, in Illyria. And um, they start out as neighbors to the Autariatai um, and we only gave them one settlement because they have been quite reduced to the past. Yeah. Um, you can imagine, yeah, there they are, um, that the Autariatai rule the enti entire Illyrian hinterland, like um, where the um, Desitiates are now, um, the northern areas that we gave the, to the RDI, um, Basically everything the um, the Skordiskoi rule. So um, the Otariatai are quite powerful and quite huge. Um, sometimes it is said they are the main rulers of Illyria, and then the Celts show up and um, probably just reduce them to a lot of lot smaller territory. Um, they also appear in in the Anabasis of Alexander, where they are funnily enough called the least warlike people in Illyria <laughs> um, because they, they try to prepare an ambush for Alexander and Alexander has like an, um, an ally come to him and is like oh no the Autariatai are preparing an ambush let me deal with them they're really not warlike uh, that should be easy and takes this opportunity ju to just plunder their lands um, <laughs> oh, maybe he God. just needed a reason yeah. Um, but yeah so um they used to be the main rivals of the RDI, and they fought over salt springs, um, the sources say. Um, several say that. Um, and the historian I just mentioned, she locates them somewhere um, upstream the, um, the Naro River, which... And we placed uh, Narenziopolis there. Um, yeah, right. Um, that's kind of where these salt springs are located, probably, maybe, um, where mm. the territories of the, the RDI, um, the initial RDI and the Autariatai must have met. Um, the Autariatai probably win this conflict, according to, I think, up here. Um, but they get weakened, they get um, basically destroyed. They. Um, they are found as mercenaries, as soldiers in various armies from the, um, from the Demate to the Macedonians in Thrace and in, in Getic land. So the uh, Autariate get, um, get destroyed and are just everywhere now. And so the RDI take power. Um, and so we have them start in, this, in the Illyrian hinterland mm. um, where they probably fought them and more towards the coast. Um, which they um, slowly expanded towards. So um, they have their cap capital at Rizon, 
um, one of the major settlements in the area because the Gulf of Rizon is um, is a really good port. It's a protected port um, that allows them to get a lot of ships in the water and conduct piracy. And the RDI are really known for their um, piracy activities. And um, yeah, so this whole expansion probably happens under Pleuratos, uh, who, who you just saw in, in Rizon. And um, and his son uh, Agron, who we have mentioned, mm. and um, yeah, so Agron later, as I said, he um, he helps Arcananians um, and and beats off the Aetolians, and then he gets so happy he he drinks himself to death. <laughs> God, yeah. that's that is one party. You must must have been a good victory. It's really funny um, because most anecdotes about the Illyrians have two things to say about them. A, they really drink a lot, seemingly, <laughs> and um, they're quite nice to women, um, especially in the eyes of the Greeks who usually weren't. <laughs> yeah. Um, there is um, a text by a Roman author. Um, on agriculture, and he also has a section on the Illyrians, where he says, um, or he has this whole deal about um, what what it takes to um, to get into agriculture, to herd cattle, and um, also kind of uh, 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 discussion about what women should do in this case, blah blah blah. And he's like, oh yeah, women should be strong when they herd cattle. Like the Illyrian women, um, mm. who are strong and take care of herds, and they can carry firewood in one hand and a baby in the other, easily. And um, this is written in, in a dialogue, and I, I think he says in, in Liburnia and in Illyria he has seen um, a woman who is pregnant just um, notice that, she's, that, that the kid is coming, so she just gets in, into a quiet place gives birth and then returns with a baby in one hand like she found it somewhere um that's really what the source says like like she found it somewhere um so um and you have this whole deal about um like i mentioned the the lyrian daughter or who is also involved in the wars of succession in macedon you have queen toita so the lyrians really have a um, are really known to be a lot nicer to women. Now, I have to say, relatively, of course, because yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's still the ancient world, but um, they definitely probably have more say there than in Greece, um, because one fragment even says that, um, that, like, it's a special thing that the Illyrian men take their women with them to entertainment. Um, and I think it's in Athens where where women aren't allowed in the in the stadium and in, in oh, really? um, fe festivals. Yeah, I didn't so know it's that. a special. Yeah, and it's a um, there's a, this whole thing about women not being allowed to leave the house without the men and so on. And so it's a really special thing that um, this fragment um, basically says that um, the Illyrian men take their wives to entertainments. Um, they are also the women are also the ones who pledge their guests at uh, parties, um, and they lead home their husbands from drinking parties, <laughs> where we are at the drinking stereotype again. And um, then it's again emphasized how much they drink, <laughs> and um, it also the RDI have a lot of slaves that are a bit like the Spartan helots, and um, they are also known for preparing lots of parties for entertainment and drinking so we should take all these sources with a grain of salt of course um <laughs> but um yeah this is a stereotype that is especially um attached to the rdi yeah cool interesting really interesting so um obviously uh, these guys obviously queen tutor expanded really far down to uh, Lissos and then there was the treaty with the Romans wasn't there that, that completely crushed them basically 
um, saying yeah. that they couldn't go further south than Lissos, so they couldn't raid the Peloponnese or, or into Greece, which, as we've seen so far, was uh, an Illyrian pastime raiding Greece. Uh, <laughs> One of yeah. the favourite pastimes. I mean, to be fair, it was quite a lot of people's favourite pastimes, wasn't it? <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah, true. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, Percy, go. Uh, Percy activities are often um, a symptom for like uh, impoverished lands or war-torn lands, and um, because these men are in a lot of wars and they notice that they're really good at them and they, that you can get quite rich off of plunder yeah and so um illyria especially the northern northern illyria is not really a fertile region in in this you see kind of a lot of these mountains um the rdi territory is not really good for farming so um that might have been that on the coast they took up uh, pirate activities um there are some more fertile regions, but yeah, there's also the point, I think it's Drabo who says that after the, um, that the RDI annoyed the Romans so much with their um, piracy, um, that they resettled them from the coast and forced them to, to do agriculture, but the land wasn't really good for agriculture, yeah. so they almost all starved. Oh god! Um, so this is kind of a bit of Roman um, freedom, bu bureaucracy <laughs> of going. Ah, uh, I don't know. Let's just settle them somewhere and force them to do to do agriculture. I guess maybe then they are be quiet. Um, so yeah, this was um, a really bad move. I think it's how he says that that they it almost um, wiped out by by this decision. Um, yeah, to get resettled from the coast further inland. Um, so yeah, as you said, um, they, they start a war with the Romans. Um, Teuta has some um, ambassadors of the Romans either imprisoned or killed, depending on the source. Maybe both. And um, because um, a Roman ally, Issa, in Illyria, which, which we already uh, have shown, um, they are kind of threatened by the Illyrians, so they call in... A not just Issa, also Apollonia, as I mentioned, and so they call in the Romans for help, and um, the Romans reduce their army, they restrict their movements, their military movements um, south of Lysos, so they can't keep raiding the Greek cities there, and um, yeah, so this is kind of how the the Adyian hegemony ends, um, but um, yeah, it, it, it was relatively short. Um, but nonetheless really interesting, especially because they are probably the ones who took out the remnants of the Illyrian Kingdom and uh, mm. must have controlled a quite sizable chunk of lands of, um, of the coast and Illyria because the, the subsequent kings of Skedilaidos and Gentios and so on, they kind of just inherit the whole thing every time there's a dynasty change. Yeah. Um, so there's always the king of Illyria, and he always seems to to rule from um, Dam um, from the Damascian coast down to Lysos, and yeah. um, that's probably thanks to the RDI. Hmm. So they basically sort of established pretty much a uh, an established border, really. I guess you would say in in such transient times, but an established border of where an Illyrian kingdom would be, at least. Yes, yeah, somewhat. Uh, it's probably that um, that they kind of see themselves as um, like the Greeks see, have like Hellas, mm. Greece, but they don't really have a um, a unified Greece. Um, the Illyrians also might probably see themselves as Illyrian, but the the strongest king kind of rules. But they often have many kings, which is kind of yeah. an issue. Um, there are several scholarship opinions on this. Um, um, Papa Zoglu, um, a scholar, I think, in, in the 70s, she even argued for uh, an Illyrian kingdom that reaches from um, the Dalmatian coast down to, to Apollonia. And um, uh, this is not really accepted because we have so many accounts of different Illyrian kings. 
Um, but there are probably attempts to, to kind of get all these minor tribes into into major alliance and mm. um, no one really quite succeeded, but um, the attempts were there. Yeah, cool. Ah, cool. Well, uh, very influential player, I would say, the RDAI, and also probably going to be quite a... Uh, a nice little faction to play. Obviously, you've got a three uh, three sort of smaller areas, two villages there, uh, but you do have two large towns down south and some pretty easy uh, rebel territories to take as well. So I think you can probably get some decent uh, expansion going with these guys. Um, in terms of their units, I think they have the standard Southern Illyrian roster, don't they? Um, yeah, but they may have they may have uh, another unit or two. So that I think concludes all the southern Illyrians. So uh, shall we move on to uh, maybe the day city? Well, there we go, guys. Thank you very much for watching the video. Of course, you can check out the longer video down in the description below. Make sure you do like and subscribe, and I'll see you all again on the next video.